powered by MPB, this is Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast, hosted by Jermaine Flood and Tara Wren. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device. I'm Jermaine Flood, and in this episode, we'll sit down with Scott Waller, president and CEO of the Mississippi Economic Council, to explore the link between early childhood education and workforce development in Mississippi. Now, since 1949, MEC has been the voice of Mississippi. Welcome, Mr. Waller. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. They're happy to have you. We want to know a little bit about MEC. So as it relates to creating a qualified and prepared workforce, what is the purpose of the Mississippi Economic Council? The Mississippi Economic Council is the State Chamber of Commerce. We are a private, not-for-profit organization. We're supported solely by the members, businesses across this state that support us for the mission of our organization, and that's to create a stronger business community throughout Mississippi. We have served as the voice of business, as you said, since 1949, and what we really focus on are what are issues that are going to improve Mississippi's economy. And really, they're broad-based, but have such a meaningful impact, particularly workforce development, Mm -hmm. uh, all levels of education. uh, Like you mentioned, early childhood education is a big component of developing the future workforce in Mississippi, as well as creating opportunities for the current workforce to make sure parents have quality child care available for their children. We look at other key issues that drive the economy, such as transportation, uh, making sure that we're continuing to find ways to improve and maintain our transportation infrastructure, particularly the roads and bridges across the state of Mississippi, because that has been a a big economic advantage for us through the years. We do not want to lose that advantage that Mississippi has had. And then finally, how overall, from an economic competitiveness standpoint, what we as the state chamber can do to work with legislative leaders to make sure there's good public policy that's being put in place that's going to have meaningful changes for our state. Right. Now, when it relates to linking the Mississippi Early Childhood Education to workforce development, why is it so important to get this done in the state? Well, it comes from a variety of reasons as to why this is something that we have to do and build on what's been happening Several years ago, when I first came to MEC 14 years ago, and I was working in the public affairs role, I had a call from someone in the media that said, why is education so important to the business community, or when did the business community become so interested in education? And I said, well, you know, it hasn't happened just recently. It's been a long-term process, particularly with MEC. You can go back into the 60s and the 70s and then really picked it back up really heavy in the late 90s, that education was a major part of our platform because we understood we had to improve our educational system at all levels in order to make that happen. And I said, what we're focusing on then and still today is pathways for students to find a career that's going to be meaningful, provide them a a living that's going to allow them to have a house support a family, give back to the community, all of those things. And I said, think about it from this perspective. I said, the kids who are in first grade today are going to be our workforce 12, 14, 16 years from now. Right. That conversation was 14 years ago, and it seems like it was yesterday. So for us to focus on how we really begin to prepare our children in this state to be successful, to have a successful educational path, it begins early. It begins very, very early. In fact, there's no question that, you know, a lot of focus is put on pre-K and and four-year-olds, but really it begins from the very beginning and making sure there's quality care, that children are hearing words and learning to build their vocabulary and developing their brain. The research is there that shows why that's so important. But what it really amounts to is if you give that solid foundation at the preschool level and early childhood level, then what you have done is you've created a foundation that's going to allow those students to be successful when they start first grade, when they start kindergarten, and all of a sudden, you know, not be behind and having to learn things that ideally for their brain to develop, they learn at a much earlier age. So from that aspect, what it then does is creates educational success for that student, 
when he enters the K-12 system. Success there then leads to success in post-secondary education. And what you want to understand, when I mentioned post-secondary education, the importance of it, we're not talking about just a four-year college degree. We're talking about all the other opportunities that are out there, whether it be through the two-year system for career technical education right. support, whether it be to industry certifications. All of these things are important in terms of developing a workforce across this state that's going to, number one, provide what we need today, but more importantly, prepare us for the future. And number two, have a workforce that's going to make companies want to expand here, or more importantly, locate and open new businesses here that's going to create those types of jobs that ultimately what we call opportunity occupations, jobs that have the potential to have higher earning potential in order to raise our per capita income, in order to get students into career fields that will be meaningful long term for them. It begins at the very beginning. Right. And as you stated, and I love this, the connecting the dots type of process of this. It all works together. You know, the bottom line is I'm, if they could see me, they could tell that I'm pretty old because my hair has already <laughs> turned gray and now it's starting to turn loose. <laughs> so I learn something every day, right. right? either how not to do something or how to do something better, or in some cases, just general knowledge that I think will be helpful long term. You never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important that when you talk about education, you're not just talking about one segment of education. You're talking about the whole gamut working together from early childhood, preparing them for K-12, K-12 providing the education they need and hopefully the guidance they need for what their next step in their educational process is. And really those pathways are so important to help us. But, you know, everybody says, well, let's go back to what I said earlier. You know, 12 years is a long time from now. 14 years is a long time from now. And yes, but in reality, we all learn it's it's not as long as you think. Yeah. But even early childhood education today impacts the workforce now. If a parent doesn't have a quality child care center that has an educational component, then the likelihood of that parent being able to be an extremely productive person in the workforce is very difficult. Providing that quality care so that they can go to work and not worry about whether their child is being taken care of and, and hopefully know that they're also getting the educational components that are so important to help that child develop, they become a much more productive workforce for our businesses today. And they are making a difference for their family today and laying the groundwork for their child in the future. And I think that's why it's never, can't look at it in a vacuum mm -hmm. that we're only talking about a, a four-year-old or a three-year-old that when we were de dealing with early childhood education, you're talking about the whole gamut of their family, the businesses that their families work for. There truly is a case for us to continue to make improvements. And I, I do want to say that in Mississippi, we have made some serious improvements. We just got a long way to go to get to where we need to be. The initial work that MEC did with the Building Blocks program of, of really using our existing child care centers to put educational components in place to allow children to begin to get that education they need to be successful. You then look at the fact that now there's an education collaborative. While it's only reaching a few thousand people, it's an example of what we can build on to be successful. So, again, continuing to fund it and raising the funds for that will be a big step in that progress. And then we're, we're continuing to look for other solutions as well because, you know, Mississippi is a small state in terms of population, in terms of state budgets. So there's only so much that there is there to go around. So we got to make sure we're using that very efficiently and finding ways to show, hey, this is a return on our investment. Let's make a more of an investment in this. And that's where we are. And I'm excited to continue to look for those new opportunities because that will have the impact that the other things we're doing in education. I mean, think about when the NAEP scores came out and Mississippi was the number one state in terms of improvement and really the only state that showed improvement in all of the areas of fourth grade reading and math, eighth grade reading and math, it really turned a spotlight on what we're doing here in Mississippi. From a national standpoint, there, there were stories written in the New York Times and other places mm -hmm. across the country about what was happening with Mississippi's educational system. And it really is, that's a, I'm a native of this state. Right. I love this state. 
and that was the first. I mean, it, it really was really a refreshing approach to see that we're starting to do some things. So it goes all the way from building on what we have and expanding what we have with early childhood, making sure that the things that are in place at the K-12 level are continuing to be there. And then when we get to the high school level, making sure that we are looking at ways to get students headed down a career pathway that helps them find their passion. Because once you find your passion, you're there. There's a quote from Mark Twain that said the two most important days of your life are the day you're born and the day you discover why. Right. And that's really what it is. When you discover what that passion is, you will be very, very good in finding your purpose. Right, right. And in taking that holistic approach, from a tactical standpoint, what tactical information could those businesses and job seekers know related to attaining those skilled workers or those job seekers in securing those high demand jobs? Well, I, I think where it comes back to is we have a lot of efforts being put into workforce development and workforce training today. The one thing that I think that we need to really focus on is how we collaborate all those efforts together. MEC traditionally does a tour around the state every year. And one of the questions that I want to ask the folks in the audience, and these are business leaders in communities going in 18 different communities and cities across the state, what is your relationship with your K-12 education folks? What's your relationship with your community colleges in your region? What's your relationship with the universities in this state? Because if there's not a relationship there, then you don't have the ability to help the people at the high school or elementary or at the community college or at the university understand what your workforce needs are so that they can make sure they're providing those students the information and education they need. There's been a lot of a lot of progress made on that front, but I think there's even more to be made. And I think there's never been a greater opportunity to capitalize on the fact that we have a lot of interest at the community college level from our, some of our universities that are really beginning to focus on how do we connect to the business community to make sure we're providing and teaching the skills that are necessary to fill the jobs they have and then turn that and think, okay, let's look forward as well. What are, the, what are we going to need for the jobs in the future? Right, right, for those job seekers. Scott Waller, President and CEO of the Mississippi Economic Council, thank you so very much for sitting down with us here. It's so nice to have you. Enjoyed it very much. Thank, thank you. you. With me right now is Jasmine Harvey, the student engagement specialist here in the Community Engagement Division at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We're going to be discussing some of the initiatives she manages. We'll be talking about workforce development outreach with Getting to Work Mississippi. We'll also discuss so much more that's going on with Jasmine, MPB Soft Skills Series, the Resume Building Workshop. We have got just so much to talk about. Workforce Wednesday, we are going to get this discussion started. Now, Jasmine, as the student engagement specialist with Mississippi Public Broadcasting Education Department, inside of community engagement, what are the initiatives that you manage? Okay, so the initiative that I manage, one of the initiatives is the Workforce Development Initiative, and that's pretty much our workforce development audience where we're engaging with partners in our communities to kind of figure out what's kind of going on, what are the trends with jobs as it pertains to the state of Mississippi. Where are the careers going? Where are the schools going as far as secondary education to college to two-year colleges or four-year colleges? As well as I manage what we will have, which will be coming soon, and I'm very excited about, is the student council. So what we want to do is create an opportunity for students to kind of be in-house with us and learn from us, and we learn from them as well. Specifically, and targeting our population, which is secondary education students, those of middle school and high school, as well as Gen Z. That has been a really big generation boost for us, learning them and how to engage them as an audience. And so what the student council will be was kind of a mentor internship perspective. So we'll bring them in in-house. They'll learn from us, specifically tailored to what they would like to do, rather than radio, television, education. And then they'll also get an opportunity to just be with us with our projects and special 
special events and contents and kind of create a voice for the Gen Z to be able to kind of reach their families and communities as well as use their voice to tap into their peers and their students to kind of get us on the right track as far as what type of content we should be putting out, what type of events we should do. I know a lot of them use social media. So getting us abreast of what social media is, what are the challenges focusing on and how we can use that to pretty much reach that audience. So when you're talking about that workforce development and you're talking about that student council, this is all falling underneath the umbrella of Mississippi Public Broadcasting's Getting to Work Mississippi, correct? Yes. Now, if you don't know about the Getting to Work Mississippi initiative, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting awarded Mississippi Public Broadcasting a grant for American Graduate Getting to Work initiative to help advance education and career readiness locally. Now, MPB is working with partners across the state to assess workforce challenges and opportunities and produce content focused on the essential skills needed for students and workers to succeed in the job markets of today and tomorrow. Now, this American Graduate Program then turned into what we were just speaking about, Getting to Work Mississippi. This is also through the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and this is again created to help young people succeed in school, career, and life. So, Jasmine, when it comes down to that Getting to Work Mississippi initiative, how fun has it been for you to be able to manage that? It has been really, really fun. It's definitely been an experience. And what we talked about as far as the history of how the grant started with the CPB in 2018. So we had a grant and we were pretty much that middleman. We served as a middleman between trying to connect careers and education. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, there isn't really a gap to bridge. Well, there really was a gap to bridge because there were some challenges not being met. And so in the process of researching as far as workforce development, jobs and schooling, we kind of ran into some, some issues as it pertains to the state of Mississippi. And so what we wanted to do was tap into our partners to see, hey, where are we now? And where are we going to be in years to come? And how do we implement content or implement projects or events that will kind of engage our community as well as lead them on the right path of being successful in right. the career and education field? So it's been very much a journey. Like I said, I've been here since the birth of the grant, Getting to Work Mississippi. And so what we were able to do is really home in on like the specific issue. And so most of the issues that we've seen as far as careers and education and bridging the gap is that options. You know, we always know that we come in with options. And so a lot of people did not know the options. And not only did they not know what options they had available, they didn't know how to connect to the resources. So we were that connector for our community, for our partners, as well as our state to say, hey, Mississippi Public Broadcasting doing some wonderful things with workforce development. We listened to the concerns that they had, and then we took it into consideration to make sure that, hey, we're pushing information, whether it was information from our partners or whether it was information just from us, you know, our own in-house content. And so the experience allowed us to be creative. There was a lot of projects that went into American Graduate Getting to Work Initiative, which is now known as Getting to Work Mississippi. And so in those projects, we were really able to engage our audience to push them towards jobs and opportunities, as well as, you know, kind of the stigma and stereotypes that they have as far as schools, you know, secondary education or two-year colleges to four-year colleges. What does that look like? Do you still make money? Do they still have programs that are connected to on-spot hiring? And they do, they do actually. And so it was just fun just researching that and then coming up with projects that we're able to facilitate and help our Mississippi community. Now, when it comes down to that getting to work and trying to get these people in these positions and jobs and get them on the right track, y'all did a little research when it came down to sectors. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. So what we wanted to do, our focus was what were their five top key sectors or what were their key sectors that were connected to an education plan, which means you can either go into a two-year college or a four-year college and you will land a job, or you will land an internship or apprenticeship, or what were those job opportunities or jobs that were looking for workers? Narrow it down to five key sectors, energy, manufacturing, healthcare, information technology, and logistics. So in one of those key sectors, there is a job for somebody. Yes. And it's a, it's a quick job that they could get. Yes. So once they get the training, they are usually put right and placed right into that sector. Right. And the great thing about it was we were able to do a what we call a scissor reel or American graduate scissor reel. We highlighted these through videos. And so we were able to connect with the community college board to help us with these community colleges that have programs that are tailored to helping students receive a job before they graduate, which means you'll get into the two-year program. You may not even necessarily go the whole two years, 
But what will happen is while you're in the program, you're already getting prepared for a internship. So with the program that we had, we were able to do some interesting research with the community colleges. And one in particular we did was Mississippi Delta Community College, and we highlight their electrical lineman program. And so with these two-year colleges, what they do is they kind of line you up where you take some classes. And then before you even graduate, you have a guarantee of getting a job or an internship or apprenticeship with the particular company that they partner with. And so in these videos, we were able to highlight those particular jobs. We were able to film workers that were almost through or finished with the program. Right. And so they were going into what will be their new career. And so what we did was we highlighted a specific student that talked about the program, talked about how the program worked, and said, well, hey, like, I have a job, or I've been receiving letters that they want to hire me. I've done good work in my internship. I've done good work in my class. I've gotten great recommendations. And so now I'm ready to have a job. And so with these things, what we talk about with workforce development as it pertains to bridging the gap is that these programs do exist. And so most of the stigma sometimes is that you have to go to a four-year college to receive a, a job that is affordable for you and your family. And that's not necessarily true. You can also go to a two-year college and, you know, with, with some of these programs that we highlight, they're making like $50,000 or more. And that's just with two-year or less experience. Right. And then just being able to facilitate what you learn in class right. at work. And so that's what we were able to highlight and do. And so that was really, really a great opportunity to kind of tap into these programs, not just throw something at the community say, hey, we have this, but to provide them with resources like, hey, this is a student, he's in the program, he's about to graduate, he already has a job, making right. $50,000. Right. So how does somebody get in contact with you if they want to be able to maybe find a program for them? Okay, yes, you can reach me at my email, which is jasmine.harvey at mpbonline.org, as well as we love to push all our information through our website, which is education.mpbonline.org. And you can click on the tab that says Workforce Development. And once you get there, we'll have all the videos that we've highlighted in these five sectors, as well as you can click on those individual colleges, kind of see what the program outlined to be from when you start, when you graduate, what it all takes as far as what credits that you need to have. And then from there, not only can you get in contact with seeing what the school has to offer, you can also contact the school and get more information as well as far as registration, uh, getting in all your information if you're interested in that particular program. And so, yeah, we, we like to push everyone to our education.mpp online page. And then you'll see our Getting to Work Mississippi Workforce Development tab. Yeah. And make sure y'all do that. There is a jot form on there as well. If you did not catch Jasmine's email on the gettingtowork.mpbonline.org, you will find the program jot form um, that you can be able to fill out. Send in what it is that you're interested in. Send in the schools that you're interested in. And we will make sure that here, Jasmine will be able to connect you with a program or a school that'll be able to help you. Now, Jasmine, when it comes down to helping somebody develop what it is that they need to be able to go into the job sector, to be able to get into a job that they want, how have you been able to develop that here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting and especially as it relates to the soft skill series that you put together? Yes, so we've convene with a lot of our partners and so with like I said we're always on an ongoing process of research where are we now as it pertains to workforce development and where we're trying to go and so we're talking to our partners the biggest thing that kept arising as far as an issue and a problem was not that you know students or any individual couldn't get a job they just didn't have the skills the necessary soft skills to obtain those jobs and I mean some of those soft skills are like the basic of the basic that you know you would think that you know they would learn in school or just learn by watching or from parents but sometimes you just don't know and so what we were able to do is we always look at a need and then we try to create content that will teach someone that mm -hmm. opportunity without shaming them or making them feel bad in any kind of way and so what I was able to do which was fun was create this seven series soft skills videos web series videos and so what we did was i used some brandon high school students and a funny story about that is a pretty much a partnership turned out to be a continue on project because these students from brandon high school were in the mississippi news and their teacher brought them to tour mpb and so i was in the process of brainstorming soft skills and seeing what kind of it would be scenario based you know just do's and don'ts in the workplace and so those students kind of jumped on board like hey we would love to help mm -hmm. so 
in doing that, I was able to get students, and which was great because, of course, our target audience is secondary students. And so I wanted to provide an opportunity where they were able to learn. And so with these soft skills, what we were able to do was do scenario-based do's and don'ts. And so we covered topics like professional attire, communication and personal skills, time management, working in team environments, problem solving and critical thinking, and then accepting constructive criticism. And then the first series was just an introduction of what soft skills is because you can't learn these things if you don't know the basis of what is soft skills, what does it you know, entail. And so what we did, we had a fun, fun time, fun learning experience where the students came in and we just did a, a do and a don't. And then we made corrections and we fixed it, you know, just to highlight some of these things that we may not be mindful of, you know, working in our careers. Or we may not even be mindful of that our supervisor is watching and that'll be the next step of saying, hey, you're a great worker. Or, hey, we need to work on your time management. And so that's what we were able to do with students. Good stuff. Now, when it comes down to students, I know they are young. Yes. So there's a lot of things that you have to work on them with soft skills included. But when it comes down to how they dress, how did you tackle that that was number one in research was professional attire and so we have to think about when I talk about our target audience we have to think about students are not necessarily where we are as far as what is considered to be professional mm -hmm. and that's understandable and so what I like to do is always turn a situation to a learning experience and so we just kind of had a conversation and how, how the script worked out was I just asked them you know what what is professional attire to you and some had answers that were correct, and some had answers. I was like, yeah, kinda, <laughs> if you do this. And so from there, I took what they pretty much gave me, and I said, okay, let's just do a scene. And so each set that we had, all the students were involved. So they were able to, whether they was on set or the potential person that was the main person of the video, or if they was just, you know, on the outside, they were able to just kind of sit and watch and say, hey, you know, I wore this before, or I never knew you were supposed to wear something like this for an interview. Or I didn't know that that really mattered. Some people think like, hey, I'm being me. I want to be creative. I want you to see my hair and my earrings and my jewelry. And sometimes it can be very distracting. And so it really was a learning experience, just learning from them and them teaching me and then them opening up to me, helping them. And, and most of them were just like, wow, I never knew this. And I'm right. Like, yeah, it's, it's, we really pay attention to these things or, you know, jobs really pay attention. to. Right. Them. So did some of this research lend its hand to my next question, the dress for success series that you did yes okay tell me about that so what I was able to pull from is that it's not necessarily just students unaware <laughs> of professional right. attire right sometimes and we can just be honest and I can be honest for myself we fall off too and you know you know sometimes we have those days where now you know casual casual Fridays you know you can wear jeans in the workplace so a lot of things have changed but you still have to kind of be careful and so with the dress for success this was the opportunity to really dive in into that soft skill of professional type. Like, hey, these are really the do's and don'ts. I know things have changed. We have casual days. But, I mean, to be honest, Jermaine, I have seen some attire uh, for just individuals coming in, even here at MPB. And I'm just like, were they coming in for an interview or were they coming from another place? Right. <laughs> And what other place would that be? <laughs> we will not mention. So I wanted to really tackle it in because I feel like it's always a learning experience. I am right. a person to always learn and grow. And so some things you're just not aware of. So we kind of tackled a lot of things from sexy attire, you know, dresses that are too short or too tight or see-through and you don't have on the right, you know, undergarments right. or, or case like that. And then we also talked about just how your face look, grooming, your hair, your nails, your shoes. You know, casual Friday, some people think you can wear flip-flops and just be making noise all the way down the hallway. Some people think that you can come to work wearing 24-inch stiletto heels, and then we have a fire or, you know, a drill and you can't make it. So just to kind of cover those things, and this was not just tailored to just women. It was men and women. So just kind of things to look out for that you don't think that your supervisor will be paying attention to, but they will really really do right <laughs> so jasmine where can they is there any way they can get in contact with you if they wanted to maybe view this dress for success series or they could go online right yes they can go online at the website as well as you can email me okay and i can send you the, the direct link to the website you know if it's, if it's too difficult to find they can email me at jasmine.harvey at mpbonline.org and then visit education.mpbonline.org and they can find it there so these re these are resources that have been 
put together for other people to use if they needed to use it inside of their organization, right? Yes. Okay. So make sure y'all go out there. If y'all need any of the resources that we're talking about today, again, that is going to be education.mpbonline.org. That website will get you into the Getting to Work website, which is gettingtowork.mpbonline.org. And there you'll be able to find some of the resources that we're talking about today. And in addition to everything that they've got going on when they're making these resources, the Community Engagement Division also has events that they do. So, Jasmine, tell me a little bit about some of your favorite events that you have done in the past. Oh, they're all my favorite. (laughs) The biggest event, I I would say, that kicked off uh, our workforce development initiative was our hiring event. Okay. And we had that in November last year. And so, you know, we wanted to have something where we're not just throwing resources at our community all the time. We want to have something in-house where they can come in and kind of see the work that we do as well as, hey, land a job or an opportunity. And so that hiring event turned out to be over 500 in attendance. Right. We had 41 employers and vendors, those that were key to the sector, the five sectors that we had. And then we had some additional jobs as well because I wasn't really turning anyone away, you know, any type of opportunity or any business that was hiring. And so what we were able to do, we were really able to paint a store for Mississippi to say, hey, not only are these resources available to you, these jobs are right here in Mississippi and they're ready to hire today, not tomorrow, today. Right. And so it was just a really, really great opportunity to see. I mean, we had a lot of people to come. And to see them in their faces, like, you know, we even had students that came from a college. A a teacher came across and she wanted to bring her students and her students came. Prior to this, we had a resume building event that led to the hiring event where we wanted to make sure that we, the people came in confident and ready for the hiring event. Prepared, yeah. So we just had people on spot that were ready to edit and critique any type of resume that you had. We even had resume building for veterans. So we had civilians on spot that can turn their civilians into a real work resume. And so, we, I mean, we really dot our I's and T's with the whole situation right. as far as the hiring event. It was just a really, really great turnout to see that a lot of people came and that we really were making a difference in Mississippi and we weren't just dishing out resources but we were providing a platform to say hey we're having a hiring event this is your opportunity this is your opportunity to put in work all the resources that we've given you so come and, and get a job and so we have some testimonies or so of individuals that did were able to get a job right that's good stuff now to my listeners you already know I'm an employee here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting so I was able to see this hiring event in full force you all literally with me included we turned the entire second floor just about of yes. MPB into an entire job fair yes I'm glad that, you know, it was able to help somebody. Yes, and I just thinking about it now, you know, I still have individuals reaching out to me saying, when are we having another one? Right. You know, and I know we're in the new norm or the new pandemic norm. And I'm like, you know what? That actually, it was our first hiring event, you know, and, and I stressed it a lot. This was the first time that we've ever did a hiring event here at MPB. And the turnout from just one just kind of set the bar for like, okay, well, now we have to have another one. And so just to see those individual faces and students and people really just like, okay, you're making a difference. You're not just saying there are jobs available and you're not helping me. You're really trying to help me get a job. And so that that turnout, my team was great. We had a great time. We stayed overtime to make sure that the event was complete and, and, and it, it really exceeded what we wanted. So to do. Jasmine, have y'all already looked for my listeners? Because I know somebody's like, I want to get into one of these job fairs. Have y'all started maybe thinking about that next one? Yes. We have. Okay. And, and it's in the works, and I will just say it is that. Okay. It's on the horizon, everybody. Make sure you stay in the know by going to the website. Now, in addition to that job event, you've done counselors' luncheons as well. And this is to help bring counselors from all over the state of Mississippi and addressing what, Jasmine? So our focus for the counselors' luncheon was to help bridge the gap between education and careers in Mississippi, which resulted in successful employment. So we wanted to tie in everything that we were doing under the grant, American Graduate, which is now getting to work Mississippi, what we right. carried it on to be, to counselors. So we didn't want to just have research just from employers. We also wanted to expand and talk to the teachers. These are the, the counselors and teachers that are with the students 24-7. Helping to mold. 
mold. Helping to mold them. And so they pretty much have intel or idea of where they are as well or what, what they're needing or what they're lacking in the school system. So it gave us a platform to open to set, have open dialogue of how to this initiative can be further distributed and useful in our school system. Right. And so what we did was everything that we did with American Graduate, how it started, we showed our videos, we talked about the five sectors, we talked about the soft skills, and we say, hey, these are resources that we have. How can this help you? Or what can we do to help you as counselors and teachers to facilitate your all goals of making sure not only that they graduate, but they're able to get a successful career? Right. So I don't mean to gather it all up, but I do because as you're talking, it sounds like a super holistic approach to being able to, one, start with children that are in high school basically maybe yes. even elementary school start there start with the counselors getting them ready to get those students ready and then in turn helping them into a college whether that be a four year or a two year and then maybe trying to pick out what they want and if they don't then you know there's sectors that they can go into and do those quick trainings to be able to get into it so I love the idea that everything that you're doing with this position is very holistic literally almost from birth to, you know, walking into a job. So it's an all-encompassing idea of how you can get somebody ready for a job basically by the time they're 10. Right. So starting from a 10-year-old <laughs> going into a grown-up, we're going to get you ready here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting, and Jasmine's going to be right at the helm. Now, Jasmine, tell me something now. One of my favorite events here is Workforce Wednesday. Yes. That has been my favorite event, not just because in the past, before the pandemic, we were able to eat lunch. <laughs> yes, great lunch. <laughs> it was totally catered, but Jasmine, let them know a little bit about what Workforce Wednesday is. Okay, so Workforce Wednesday was birthed out of our initiative, which came from the grant that we had. And so we wanted to further have an opportunity to continue to connect with our partners and our state and just anyone that was interested in learning where are we going as far as careers in education. And so we provide a networking opportunity to all those uh, with resourceful information about workforce development, including mentoring programs, apprenticeships, work-based learning, soft skills. And each time that we had the event, we invited over, we probably had over 35 participants and what we wanted to do was bring in speakers from different areas, just highlighting all these different resources and programs that we have here in Mississippi. And so what those meetings allow us to do is really have a conversation and not only have a conversation from just one perspective, but have a conversation from multiple perspectives like, hey, I'm a teacher. This is what we're doing. This is what we're seeing. This is how we're being affected, you know, with the jobs that are available. We're teaching these students. We're telling them this, but there's not any programs in the school that align up with that. And so we pretty much have a conversation that keeps us on the right guide to leading our community in the right direction of being able to be successful and have a successful job or have a successful education career. Now, some of those past presenters have been pretty pro uh, high profile yes. now. So the current lieutenant governor of Mississippi, uh, Delbert Hoseman, he was one of those presenters, right? Yes. So this is not just, you know, just somebody. This right. th We're bringing in somebody who is going to be able to help or they're going to be able to get together and say, yeah, you know, we are coming in a consensus on this and this is how we're feeling about the workforce here in the state of Mississippi. Yes. So that sounds great, too. So when it comes down to workforce development, I know that there is something going on. So now, right now, you are in the midst of what you all are calling the self-presentation series, correct? Yes, we are. Okay, tell me about this self-presentation series. I did get into the first two Workforce Wednesdays, so um, the first two self-presentation series Wednesdays. And so the next one coming up will be the final in that presentation series. But give me a little bit of background about this self-presentation series. Okay, so we're all transitioning to what we call the new normal with the pandemic. And so we wanted to make sure that we were creating content that we were able to provide to help those during the pandemic. And so what we noticed was now that we convened with meetings like via Zoom, via teleconference or via telecommunication, that some of these etiquettes as it pertains to self-presentation, we're now in a particular situation where we're bringing our work family into our homes. 
And mm. so a lot of people are not aware uh-huh. of that. The way that you conduct yourself at work has to be the same at home. And so we want to just provide an opportunity to help to continue to convene with partners, connect with new partners, um, facilitate open dialogue. And what this self, uh, self-presentation self series does is that it provides tips, strategies, best practices on the ways to present oneself verbally and virtually screen to screen. And so we just kind of pick titles of things like, you know, be careful what you say. Right. Be careful the way you dress. Make sure you have pants on. You know, just those little things. Make sure your background is neat and not clustered. Make the, make sure that you're really representing your your entity or your business in, in the right way in that so that it will, won't be distracted to anyone else or won't take from you. Right, right. So the first in that series was hosted by Claudia Singletary. Yes. She's the executive assistant here at Mississippi Public Broadcasting. She hosted the What Would You Say Workforce Wednesday. If you want to view that, they can go on the Facebook page, right? Yes, they can go on our Facebook page as well as we will always put up the recording from the Zoom on our education.mbbonline.org. Go to that Workforce Development tab and it, it'll be the first thing that pops up. Now, the second person in the series was who? Miss Coretta Frazier from Professional Management Solutions. Okay, okay. And she presented on what? How to Improve Your Personal Brand on Zoom. And that was a really, really great series just talking about you know, you have to bring yourself even at home. You know, you have to bring work home. And you have to continue to be a professional at that. And, and just some ways to make sure, you know, when you're presenting or you're having a meeting that you're representing your business to the best of your ability. And so she kind of talked about some strategies and tips to make sure that you don't take anything away from who they will perceive you to be at work and then when you're at home. Okay. Now, I'm going to rub my hands together because I already know this third one is going to be the doozy. Yeah. Let them know about the third in this self-presentation series, the third Workforce Wednesday. So I'm so excited to announce that our (laughs) third presenter is Miss Sharita Brent, and she will be with us. And her title of her presentation will be Please Wear Pants to Work, which will be very (laughs) Very interesting what she uh, presents on. Now, if those of you don't know, Rita B. now is a comedian, musician, and military vet from Jackson. She has gone viral, everybody. So all the way down to her prayers that she does for certain individuals. She also did the Quarantine Shuffle, which was a hit song during the pandemic last year. So if you want to be able to get into that Workforce Wednesday, Jasmine, let them know how they can do that. Okay, so registration is available on our education.mpbonline.org website, as well as you can go to the Workforce Development tab, and it should be the first thing that pops up. It'll be an Eventbrite registration link, Mm -hmm. and so you just register there, and then they'll send you the confirmation and the Zoom link to your email. Okay, okay. Now, Jasmine, I just love all of this, every single little thing about it. It is just so great how we are able to address the needs of Mississippi, and even sometimes address the needs outside of the state when it comes down to workforce development, and we're doing that right here with you with getting to work Mississippi inside of the community engagement division right underneath the umbrella of MPB's education department. So I thank you so, so very much for all the work you have done and are continuing to do with that initiative there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jermaine, for having me. Yeah. It's now been let's, really exciting. It's been great. Now tell me a little bit about some of the partners that y'all partnered with. We want to go ahead and give them a little thank you. Okay. So <laughs> some of our past partners that we've had was Mississippi Community College Board, Mississippi Department of Education, Mississippi Department of Employment Security, Mississippi Department of Human Resources, Mississippi Department of Rehabilitation Services, as well as Mississippi Works. And then our current projects that we have to continue on with workforce development and making sure we're staying engaged and on the right track with our students is Mississippi Community College Board. Right, right. So thank you to all of our past and our present partners in not in crime but in good crime we're in good crime because we're making sure that we're getting everybody into that workforce and making money that is worthwhile when you get in there so make sure you do that again jasmine let them know again the website let them know your contact information just let them know (laughs) so i can be reached at jasmine.harvey at mpbonline.org 
org or by phone 601-432-6172 and to get all this lovely information and resources and connect with us as it pertains to the workforce development initiative it can be found on education.mpbonline.org on our workforce development tab make sure you go out there and do that jasmine harvey again was in studio with me she is our student engagement specialist in the community engagement division here underneath mississippi public broadcasting's education department and again she is the person who helps to run getting to work mississippi and that is mpb working with partners across the state to assess workforce challenges and opportunities and to produce the content that's focused on those essential skills that are needed for students and workers to succeed in the job markets of today and tomorrow. Make sure you get into the know, getting to work.mpbonline.org for more information. This has been Chalkboard Chat. Class is now dismissed. You've been listening to Chalkboard Chat, an MPB education podcast. To hear this episode and more, visit education.mpbonline.org or download the MPB public media app to listen on your iPhone or Android device. This podcast is hosted with love by ACAST.